Starting just a little earlier tonight, um, I got a great show for you guys. We're going to be sharing some stuff from uh, some artists, uh, from Messianic artists, one of them being the Mel Evav and Yehuda Glanz, uh, two of my, one of my favorites, two of my favorites, actually. I'm going to be sharing some of their videos, along with a teaching that I did some time ago on the Third Temple. Now, uh, when I play that, Again, it was made, uh, I think it was last year when I made that video. So I think now, I'm not sure what's going on, if they're still working on the temple or not, that I'm not sure. But uh, when I did do the video, they were in construction. As far as where they stand, I'm not sure yet. If you know, let me know, and I can uh, update others as far as the temple is, is concerned. So a little later on in our show, we're going to be playing that video that I taught. And in the meantime, we're going to be playing some music along with some other music that I'm, I'm pretty sure you enjoy. So share this on your page if you're watching this for the first time. And uh, we're going to begin just about now. So uh, uh, gonna, again, we're going to see, as you can see, we got some music on the top that I'm going to be playing from. And then you see we got some videos here. I'd like just like the setup that I got from OBS. It's amazing what this thing does, as you can see. I just learned this and I'm getting, I guess, more and more into it. And as you can see, it's an amazing piece of software you can use for your own purposes for the kingdom of God. And as you can see, uh, you can add videos, you can add your music, you can put your, your video, graphics. It's amazing. God is good. And let me tell you something. When you do something for the kingdom, God is, enhances it. He makes it even better and better. It's not me. It's him who is leading me by his Ruach, by his spirit. Amen. So let's... Uh, Go on. Without further ado, I'm going to play this video from Zemel Levav. And uh
Abba Father, save me from this hopelessness. God my Father, help me fill this emptiness. I ran away from what I knew was true. I need to hear your voice and be close to you. Don't let me fall away, just like the grass withers away, and like the flower I will fade. Don't let me fall away. I'm a father. Save me from my enemies, God, my father. Tents of wickedness surround me. Open up my lips so I can speak. Help me to stand for I am weak. Don't let me fall away. Just like the grass withers away, and like the flower. their videos you know when I see that when I hear that and when I the words of that song it it brings me to a verse of scripture that I just came up with right now as I was listening that the Lord prompted me to this verse and it's basically from the book of Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 12 it says take care brethren that there not be in any one of you an evil unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God my goodness you know, this book was written to Hebrew Christians, Jewish Christians, by the way, hello. And he was saying that be careful that your heart doesn't fall away. And it's very possible in these last days, will, as the Bible says, men's hearts will go, grow cold. Is that only speaking about the Goyim or the Gentiles or the unbelievers that don't believe in Messiah Yeshua? Or is that a general statement? 
I don't know. I, I couldn't, you can, you can do it both ways if you ask me because there's a lot of people who claim to be believe that believers in Messiah and they're not and their hearts are cold and they're growing cold. And you can see that because as Yeshua said, by their fruit, you shall know them. And there's a lot of people proclaiming that they are believers in Messiah, Yeshua, but they're not. And their works testify to that. They're not what he taught them to be. And they're becoming even worse, becoming subjects of, like they say, a, a product of their environment, as they say. So again, it's a warning. And if you read verse 11, uh, Yahweh says, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. That's what he says prior to that verse. And I repeat it. Take care, brethren, that there not be any one of you an evil or unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. But in verse 13, he says, but encourage one another day by day, as long as it is still called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. As you can see, sin is a deceitful spirit and is a lying spirit, and it's always lying to you. You know, the sin that we do is a lying spirit, and it's, it's from the sinful nature, yes, but it's all lies. We're believing in lies. We're acting out lies. It's of the world. So he's telling us today not, not to be as the world is, is doing, and again, be encouraging other, one another day by day as it is called today. I mean, I don't have to tell you what you see in watching on the news on a daily daily broadcasts, what you see in this country, as well as other parts of the world, we see more things becoming even more prevalent as we see the end of time coming very, very soon and everything coming to a close. You don't have to be a brain surgeon, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand that if you look around and you click the channels and you watch even videos on YouTube or whatever, you see more and more people talking about the end times because it's getting so close that the Messiah is just about around the corner and he's about to be dispersed, as they say, on the earth. So be ready. Don't let him catch you sleeping. And that means not natural sleep, but spiritually minded. Don't let him be, don't let him catch you spiritually sleeping. Amen. All right, we're going to begin our show. We got some more stuff to come at you. Uh, there's a beautiful video right there, as you can see, Days of Elijah and the Israel flag. There's some video that is also beautiful. All right, we're going to show you now something from uh, Yehuda Glance. I'm going to wait a second. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to play some music from Yehuda Glance, and then we're going to switch it up with his video. I, I picked up a video from him that I saw uh, online. He was in a park, and it was such a cool video that I want to show to you guys as well. All right, so begin. We're going to start with his music. And this is, again, Berkat Habai from Yehuda Glass, right here on Grafted in Messiah. Keep it locked. The biggest songs of the year. Count it down. <laughs>
That's it, commercial fee. We don't play commercials except our own. <laughs> That's right, baby. All right, we're rocking here with Yehuda Glanz, Berhak Hawaii, right here on Grafted in Messiah. All right, that's Yehuda Glanz. And now we're going to play Yes, B. Mi Dio di Malama 
I want more from you, Huda Glan. Ufakem. Sabikem. Alright, that's Nale from Yehuda Glan. And I'm gonna stop it right about there. I'm gonna show you now a video from Yehuda Glan's that he did in the park not too long ago. Alright, let me get this out. He did this video that I'm gonna show you just about, oh no, no, it was a few months ago. Hold on, I'm gonna shut this down. That's Ooh, the King Sadiq, and I'm going to play that one now. I, I know I love the song, but I, I'm not going to play that now. I just load it automatically. It looks like my computer crashed. But anyway, I want to show you the video with you who don't...
Shalom Botanu akhla shalvam Kam tadura akhvam Kam tadura akhvam Canta dura, ajua, canta dura, ajua, y va, y va. Voy pa' que una jad de simcha y braja, ve a tzlaca. Pese zota cora y tronen con la tora, pese a ma un beso tapina, ti es ruya, ashkina. Ay, ya. La bendición que se pone cuando uno en la buena casa. Argentina, and this man plays like so many instruments, I can't even count, but he's such a great artist, I just love his music, I've been listening to him for a long time, another Sephardi believer, I'm a big fan of his, so check him out on YouTube, I'm not sure if his website is still up, it used to be utaglass.net, that may be different, but he's still on uh, online, you can find him there if you're interested in hearing some of his music. Amen. All right, so we're going to uh, begin now. I'm going to show you my, uh, my video that I did on the Third Temple. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I'm going to show you that. So stay tuned. we got more to come. You know, I always play music a little bit. Um, yeah, so we're noticing that the third temple is in construction. It probably finished by now. And Jerusalem is pretty much all for this. So I'm going to be sharing with you an article that I saw just about, like I said, about a little over a week ago. 
and now the article talks about the third temple that they have constructed. Now I'm going to be sharing this screen with you so you can see the article that I have in front of me that I was looking at and it's right there. And it says, this is from, again, October 30th from Rivka Lambert Adler. And the article starts by saying, when the third temple is built, these temple priests will be ready to serve. And if you're looking at this with me on Facebook, you'll see it on Zoom, you'll see the priest there in position. And basically a scripture here you'll see also mentioned is Ezekiel 4430, which says, all the choice first fruits of every kind and all the gifts of every kind of all your contribution shall go to the Kohanim, which is the priests. And you shall further give the first of the yield of your baking to the Kohanim, that a blessing may rest upon your home. And this is again from Ezekiel 44 and verse 30. This is from an Israel Bible. Now, I'm going to scroll down some so we can even read even more so on this article. And we look, it says, along with the prophets, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Zephaniah, Rabbi, Amchai, Cohen of Zavat, in the Galilee, in the descent of Avarin, the first priest of Israel, these male descendants are known as Kohanim, which again, in Hebrew, that means priests. And then we look further down. Let me not scroll too much. It says, I hereby take your fellow Levim from among the Israelites. They are assigned to you in dedication to Hashem to do the work of the tent of meeting. And this is a quotation from Exodus 18 and verse 6. And I'm going further down. It says, amongst traditional Jews, the lineage of male descendants of Aaron, the high priest, is carefully preserved. Interesting, over 98% of Jewish men who identify as Kohanim and who have their DNA tested have a specific genetic marker in common. It also says, certain vesicle laws apply to the Kohanim today, but when Jerusalem will once again have a temple, their priestly roles will become significantly more influential. Cohen and his partner, Rabbi Peretz Vivkin, want to prepare the living descendants of, the, of Aaron, the high priest, to be ready to step into their biblically mandated roles as soon as the third temple is operational. Together, the two men are launching Kehuna Academy, an online community and school for learning about the service of the Kohanim in preparation for the third temple. Kahuna is the Hebrew word for priesthood. Rifkin currently runs Lahud Ha Kohanim, a New York based nonprofit educational organization devoted to educating the world about the importance of the biblical priesthood. Cohen explained that since the Second Temple was destroyed nearly 2,000 years ago, Kohen today lacked the practical knowledge to conduct the temple service. He shared with Israel 365 News that generations of major rabbis have spoken about the importance of his education. Until his death in 1933, Rabbi Israel Meir HaKohen Kagan, popularity known as the Shoves Chaim, oversaw a learning program in Poland to prepare Kohanim for the temple service. Prior to the launch of the Kahuna Academy, no such program has existed for the past 100 years. As we get closer to the Messianic era, the need for Kohanim to learn the revenant law has become more acute. Practically speaking, the Kahuna Academy aims to be a resource center for groups of Kohanim from around the world, I'll explain Cohen. They want to encourage Kohanim to create local groups. Most don't know where to start, Cohen shared. He says, and I quote, he, we aim to be a resource center so they can have a curriculum to study from. Cohen currently runs Live Kabbalah, which offers online instruction based upon the teachings of the great prophets of the Bible, as well as upon the teachings of the Kabbalistic sages that follow their vision. He elaborated that Kohanim don't currently have the organization until um, the United Front, which Kohanim shall have. Because of my experience creating a school that students from all over the world can connect to, 
I saw the value and have the ability to unify coining worldwide. Someone needs to do it. It needs to happen. This consciousness needs to get out there and it really requires a team to do this. And that's his quote. I'm going to read up the rest of this article. It says again, let me scroll a little further down. If you're watching this and you're following this for the first time, this is Gil Burgos. We're sharing uh, information regarding the third temple in Jerusalem that is being constructed even now as we, we're beginning to see the, the beginning stages of what is happening right now in Jerusalem. And this article was published last month. And it says, let me read further on. It says, Kahuna Academy will begin to instruct, will begin instruction in English and experts will quickly expand to Hebrew. It's a grassroots organization with and suitable volunteers and donors are most welcome. I'm pretty sure that's obvious. Rifkin co commenting about the role of non-Jews in the development of this project. They are looking for donors, Jews and non-Jews who are willing to contribute, be remote with pure intentions. You have many goyim, timamim, God-fearing Gentiles as well. They want to connect with God. And in Ezekiel, Yekazel, all the nations of the world have their spot around the third Midrash, which is temple, he elaborated. Uh, and it's interesting. Uh, I'm going to stop there for a moment. <laughs> I'm going to just share my thoughts. Now, it's interesting that when it comes to religion, the Orthodox community, like I see them and all of them, the black hats, black coats, a lot of them are pretty much to themselves. They have their own communities and they have their own community uh, organizations throughout the world, all of Europe, well, most of Europe in designated areas, they're all over and here in New York. But my point is that not so much that who they are, or where they are, but they only seem to appreciate non-Jews when Jew, non-Jews are giving to their work. But it's like saying you can give to our work, but you can't be a part of us. In other words, you're excluded from God's promises and God's blessings, which is totally ignoramus and is not true. They are the ones who are ignorant to the fact that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever should believe on him should not perish, but receive eternal life. Yohanan 3.16, John 3.16. But they are ignorant to the fact that the gospel is for the whole world, that God wants to redeem mankind and restore the world unto himself and is not a select people because even the new testament the brit hadashah says in the new covenant there is no jew or gentile but we are one hello in messiah yeshua but unfortunately they're ignorant to this fact and they still feel that they are the only ones god's chosen ones and people which to a degree it is true salvation is of the jews as it says in scripture but even now the new testament signifies that the gospel is to the jew first but also to the gentile or the goyim as they put it so for them to say that yeah you can give us money but you can't be part of the kingdom is totally preposterous if i might say so i'm going to switch back here and go back to the article so we can finish up this article and i can further elaborate on my thoughts on this and it goes on to say a little further down animal sacrifice and the architecture of the third temple now this is interesting it says cohen is aware that the thought of animal sacrifice rubs people the wrong way in fact there is a difference of opinion upon rabbinic scholars about whether or not animal sacrifices will be part of the third temple in any case the ideas are very are really very deep he says he said reassuringly, the Kahuna Academy, quote, will not just train Kohani in the external laws, but will connect them to a much deeper place. And I wonder what he's talking about in that regard. Another debate concerns the architecture of the temp uh, Third Temple. The Temple Institute of Jerusalem promotes the idea that the Third Temple will be physically similar to the Second Temple. And that was the one that the Romans had destroyed. Uh, in chapters 40 through 47, the prophet Ezekiel describes his vision of the dimensions of the third temple in a way that significantly varies from the structure of the second temple. We disagree with the Temple Institute very strongly about the architecture of the third temple, he says. Part of the agenda is to push Ezekiel's third temple, Cohen asserted. Now, we look further down, it talks about Israel's spiritual leaders. Who are going to be these people? 
And he also says the Kohanim are really the leaders of Am Israel, the Jewish nation, who are blessing the entire world with love. I don't know about that, it's true. When we create that infrastructure, we are bringing together Am Israel and the entire world. The entire world's spiritual and material sustenance comes through the Kohanim. No, that is not true. It comes from Messiah Yeshua and his Ruach Kodesh, his Holy Spirit. And then it says, all of us have to prepare for the Geola, redemption, which is true. For Kohanim, this takes it to the next level. Every Kohen has an actual part to play, needs to be learned the laws that apply to them. They're talking about the Torah, learning all the Levitical laws and the temple construction and everything you see in the Torah. They are going to follow it literally step by step to fulfill this. Now, it's going to conclude this article by saying there is so much that is in front of the Kohanim. If you really believe that Moshiach, Messiah, is coming, we have a special role. We have to learn about it. We have to get the consciousness out there, he says. It's exciting for the Levites, the Israelites, and the Gentiles. This project is much greater than just for Kohanim. We are spreading this awareness of the temple and of the Kahuna to the rest of the world. And finally, it says we are so bereft of leadership and clarity about Hashem, God's connection and love for us. The love of Hashem, the word Hashem means the name, by the way, if you're not sure, a lot of Orthodox Jews, they say Hashem, they, they don't say God's name, they say the name, which in Hebrew, Hashem means the name. So since God is holy, they respect the name of God, they don't even pronounce his uh, name. So they say the name, Hashem. Interesting also that when Jews were writing the scriptures, they would pen the Old Testament, the Tanakh or the Torah, and every time they would begin to write the name of God, they would stop, wash their hands, write the name of God, and then wash their hands again, pick up the pen and wash their hands, and then continue to write the remaining part of the scriptures. That's what kind of respect that they have or had, but it's something that amazes me, which is a great thing. And finally, this article finishes up by saying the love of Hashem again comes to the Jewish people through the Kohanim, through the hands that are outstretched and blessed of people with love. And he concludes with that. Now, let me stop this share for a moment. Now, what I'm going to do for the remaining of this broadcast, and this is going to uh, air live also on my radio show, Prophetic Encounter. We're going to air this also most likely today or tomorrow. So you can hear this if you're missing this. And if you're joining us for the first time, my name is Gil Burgos. I'm a Messianic leader, grafted in Messiah Ministries and the founder of President Gil Burgos Ministries. And I also have the Prophetic Encounter radio station online right now as we speak. Um, a lot of good stuff on there as well. Anyway, I'm going to be sharing with you also some scriptures that you we can look at because there's something interesting about the scriptures when it talks about the third temple. And unfortunately, many of the Jewish people in Israel and the Jewish community as a whole are ignorant to the fact that they are going to be deceived when the third temple is constructed and who is going to sit there. Oh, my Lord Jesus, it's crazy. So I'm going to share the screen once again so we can look at this. Um, and we're going to look at some scriptures here so we can see this. Now, I'm going to look at first one here is from Revelation chapter 2. And here's John writing this part. Oh, actually, John is writing this, but this is Yeshua speaking to the church here. And he says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. And he tells them, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. And are not, but are the, the synagogue of Satan. And wow, that is some, that's some serious stuff. And I'm, let me just click on that so we can go a little bit further back and read this in context. So this is written to the church of Ephesus. And it's, it begins, and I'm reading King James. It says, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, write, these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. Let me just move that a second. I have this in my way. Who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And he says, Yeshua speaking to the church and, and to the angel, the pastor of that church. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou hast, canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them to be liars. And he further, further goes on in verse four, a very familiar verse that we have heard and quoted many times. And he says, nevertheless, I have somewhat thee against thee because thou hast left thy first love. 
So in context, this is written to the church of Ephesus. But interesting, when we go down, we read that verse, and it's, it's basically talking about uh, Satan. And then we go down, look to verse 8. He switches the gears, and he writes, And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna, he says, Write these things, saith the first and the last, which is Yeshua, which was dead and is alive. And he says again, I'm reading the text, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but the synagogue of Satan. And he says, fear none of those things which thou hast shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you in prison that ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee the crown of life. And this is again, this text, basically starts out with the church of Ephesus and then Yeshua speaks to the church of Smyrna and it's just interesting and on verse 6 he says but this thou hast that thou hatest the deed of the Nicolaitans which I also hate and it's amazing how Yeshua is switching things up here he's addressing the churches in regards to the second temple and we're going to read it again in two other verses that makes clarifies the text and what God is saying here what's going to happen he says who say they are Jews and are not. And, you know, these people, a lot of people think they are, they are Jews, but they're really not Jews and they're going to mislead people. And I'm not saying, I don't know who is, who's who, only God knows who's who, but there's going to be a time. And I'm speaking as the scriptures have, have, have stated, there's going to be a time that people are going to be deceived because they think that everyone who wears a, a priestly garment and goes into a temple is of the Kohenim or, or races, and I don't care, you know, people can say whatever, and only God knows if they really go back to the tribe of, of, of they go back to the Levi, Levites or the Levitical priesthood or uh, descendants of Aaron. Only God knows that. We cannot really know for sure. We can only speculate, but these people are saying they are Jews, and who knows if they really are Jews. I think they, like the Bible says, they are from a synagogue of Satan. And even Yeshua, when he was here, he said to the Pharisees, your father is of the devil. And that's, that is some, some harsh words. And he knew because their hearts were black, they were dark, and they had a, a form of righteousness, but they really weren't righteous. They had a form of religion, but they were just using rituals uh, and just trying to go with the flow. They really, 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 even Nicodemus had to be born again. They weren't of the spirit. They were just following the Torah to the letter. And that's it. Ritualistic practices, as we see today, it's not all about ritualistic practice. It's about the spirit, the Holy Spirit. It's about salvation. It's about Yeshua, what he did on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. Okay, so let me move on. I'm going to show you a few more scriptures. And here's the other one I want to show you. It's from Revelation 3, 9. Revelation 3, 9. This is from the New American Standard. And this is, again, Jesus or Yeshua speaking. He says, Behold, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. I will make them come down and bow down before your feet and make them to know that I have loved you. So we have to read this in context again. So, again, this is written to the church, to the angel of the church of Sardi of Sardi. And then we go further down and it says to the message to Philadelphia. There's another church. And then again, we read the text. It all applies to what we see here. Again, verse one, he who is holy, holy is true. Who has the key of David, who opens the door and no one was shut and who shuts and no one opens says this, he says, I know your deeds. Behold, I have put you before an open door, which no man can shut because you have a little power and follow my word. And I have not and have not denied my name. Behold, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. I will make them come and bow down before your feet and make them know that I have loved you because you have kept my word of perseverance. I will also keep you from the hour of testing that hour which is about to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. Verse 11, he says, I am coming quickly. Hold firmly to what you have so that no one will take your crown. I believe this is speaking up to us today. 
And in verse 12, the one who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and, and he will not go out from it anymore. And I will write on him the name of my God and, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God and my new name, the one who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the what? To the churches. So we see that a new Jerusalem is about to come into the earth, not the old. God is doing a new thing. He's about to release the new Jerusalem after the tribulation, after the millennium kingdom and Satan is destroyed and locked up and whatever done away with. God brings a new Jerusalem to the earth. It's amazing. I can't wait for that. All right. Let me bring out the other uh, scripture here so we can look at that as well. This one is going to blow your mind. Uh, this is from 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. This is from the King James as well. And reads, now we, Paul writing, he says, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind and will be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come, pay attention now, except that there come a falling away first and that the man of sin be revealed. He's talking about the Antichrist here. Verse 4, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, all that is worship, so that he as God, watch this, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And then he says, remember ye not when I, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know that withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out the way. Which is talking about the Holy Spirit. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. But when we focus on verse uh, three, it's a very important verse that you need to understand. Again, let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first and let the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And again, verse four, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, all that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple. This is the third temple. Hello. Showing himself that he is God. Whoa, that is amazing. So that is basically saying that in the end times, the Antichrist is going to come and appear on the scene. And he's going to sit, watch this, in this third temple. And many of God's people, the Jews, are going to be deceived because they have not accepted Messiah Yeshua. And they, again, are going to be eternally lost if they do not repent. Even Jesus said, if you do not believe, verse, I believe it's John chapter 8, that I am he, which is a term basically only God can say that as he did. I am that I am, or I am, he told Moses. Moses said, what should I tell the people when I go before Pharaoh? And God says to him, tell them that I am has sent you. Jesus himself says the same thing. He said, unless you don't, unless you believe that I am the all the eternal one, you will die in your sins. He's speaking to Jewish people there, rabbis, rabbinical Jews who follow the Torah, follow the rituals, follow all these things, follow the commandments and all these things, but still are lost. They don't have a savior because they are still into ritualistic practice, as we see even today. Unfortunately, people are of the Jewish community following these things to the letter and, and rejecting the one who can save them. So do not give up, my friends, on the Jewish community. They need a savior. They are still waiting for the Mashiach. They are saying one day he will appear, but little did they know that he has come and he has risen from the dead and he's coming back soon with fire in his eyes eyes and he's coming back for a church a bride without spot or wrinkle so yeshua is back he's coming back he's in the earth it's by his spirit 
So the, unfortunately, the people of the Jewish community reject that theory, that doctrine, and that theology. Unfortunately, but we have not have to. We cannot give up on them. We have to pray for them because what you see behind me, this this guy right here. This priest is what we're going to see in this third temple in Jerusalem very, very shortly. And unfortunately, they are going to allow the Antichrist to come in and sit there and deceive them. And they will be eternally lost until Yeshua comes back and reveals the man of perdition. That's who he is, the Antichrist. So my friends, it's time for us to get on board with God's plans, continue to share the love of God, continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and pray that the eyes of their understanding be enlightened. They'll be able to wake up that the veils that are over the eyes be lifted and they can see that the whole thing has been done away with. Yom Kippur is not necessary. Uh, all the things that they uh, speculate, they don't understand of Isaiah 53 saying, speaking of a nation, not the Messiah, all these doctrines they have come up with because they have rejected the only one that can save them, unfortunately. So my friends, pray for them. Do not, do not give up on them. They need your prayers. Amen. Well, that's about it, my friends. I'm out of time. Just wanted to share with you that brief, that brief uh, rendition of the temple. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining us today on the Prophetic Encounter. We look forward to hearing from you. We look forward to sharing more stuff like this on Zoom and on Facebook. And we're looking forward to hearing from you. For more information on Gil Burgos Ministries, visit us on the web at www.gilburgos.com or www.propheticencounterradio.com. Jewish music, Messianic music. I play my own stuff there too, as far as teaching prophetic ministry. Amen. Thanks again. I'm out of time. Got to run. Till the next time I see you, may the Lord richly bless you. And share this again with someone who could benefit from these teachings. Amen. God bless you. Shalom. Some time ago. And it's a very prophetic, really profound message that I don't think a lot of people really don't want to hear that. And it's to stepping on a lot of toes, if you ask me. And that's just, uh, just how it is. Unfortunately, we have to reach out. And not everybody that's going to hear a, a true word of Adonai is going to accept it. And we as believers in Messiah Yeshua must truth, uh, proclaim truth. And the truth is something that sets people free, according to what Yeshua said. And not everybody wants to hear truth. That's just how it is. They want, they'd rather hear a lie, some people. Oh, just tell me what I want to hear and we're friends. But the minute you tell them the truth, you got issues, you got a problem with them. Amen. So I hope, again, you were blessed by that. And I pray uh, that you will just uh, share that with somebody that may benefit from it. Here, we're going to take another quick break, and we'll be right back. You are listening to The Prophetic Encounter. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back with more music. Shalom. Um, yeah, so Prophetic Encounters. Yeah, if you want to hear um, really cool um, messianic worship and uh, news about Israel, news about uh, what's going on in the world, you can check out uh, prophetic encounters he is following and he has a great show and um, I like to support um, all of us you know um, that are trying to break out in, the, in, in, in a ministry or in a business format so let's support our local um, entrepreneurs here so John if you want to, if you want to follow him and he's got a great little ministry I, I really enjoy it myself I got to make mine look all high tech, schmite tech like that. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, with, um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know for sure. Cause I'm over here on the West coast, but it sounds like you're, you got an East coast accent. So I'm, I'm thinking hypothetically here that you're more than likely Puerto Rican or Cubano. I'm thinking, yeah. Uh huh. Well, us us Sephardic Jews. I mean, we we come in all different backgrounds, and my great grandparents uh, came uh, to the Americas from Morocco um, on one side, and they immigrated into Mexico City. So we like to tell people we're Greek, Mexican, Moroccan Jews. Go figure. <laughs> 
Yeah, it, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like a nice, spi it's, a, it's a spicy stew. Yeah, it's a spicy stew. And you know us Mexicans, we've got all the spice. Yeah. One all right, we're going to finish up right about now. I'm going to play a song by Matis Yahoo called Tornado featuring Polish Ambassador. Hold on, more of Central Alberta's greatest hits on the way. When the night is young And I'm on a jet plane Across the sky Planes across the night Bumping around with my tone of home Going home bound when I sound like a tornado Some love but they can't be I roll like an old tree And all the big bad grits fall down when I sneeze All the liars and thieves return to your evenings and circles round and round like a merry-go-round in the tree till I fall down Now I walk in the mud, play with my shit Stop through the sludge, cause I'm cool with it Much more comfortable, trudge through the mess Sad king, so lovable, double time like all the rest Open doors until they shut Till I'm down, so down, fake smiles in the gut Going hard like marbles and stones And the sun is set When the night is young And I'm on a jet plane Across the sky Planes across the night Puffing around with my tone of home Going home bound when I sound like a tornado Some love but they can't be I roll like an old tree And all the big bad grits fall down when I sneeze And all the liars and thieves return to your evil deeds When the day is done and the sun is set When the night is young And I'm on a jet plane Across the sky Planes across the night Bumping around with my tone of home Going home bound when I sound like a tornado Hold on, more of Central Alberta's greatest hits on the way All right, that was Tornado featuring Polish Ambassador by Matsis Yahoo. All right, folks, we're out of time. We've been on for over an hour, so I'm done. I uh, hope, you, again, you watch this and you watch that video. Share it with your friends, family, loved ones. I know they'll be blessed. Amen. All right, so thanks again for watching. I'm going to go eat my dinner. Anyway, God bless you. Shalom, shalom from Grafted and Messiah. Until the next time I see you, may the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. The King of Kings, the Malek of Malek, bless you and bless your life. May the Lord bless you, keep you, and shine his light upon you. Be gracious to you. May Allah be lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom and shalom. Amen. God bless you, friends, and we'll see you again soon. Bye.
Blessed be the name. 